Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Often when we're out taking pictures of animals in a zoo, the background or the area behind the animal isn't very appealing. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate something you could do in Photoshop to blur the background that is very easy to do. All right, I have this image of the tiger. I like it a lot, uh, but the background, you know, just doesn't look right. So I want to just blur the background slightly to allow uh, the tiger to stand out a little more. Now to do this in Photoshop, you're going to use something that's kind of buried in Photoshop. A lot of people don't know it's there. Uh, to find it, you go to the help menu and you go down to hands-on tutorials. Once you do that, you'll get this dialog box. From this dialog box, you'll see right here, Quick Actions. You're going to want to go right there, click on that, and then you're going to want to go to this one right here, Blur Background. You can see there's a lot of different things you could do. Adjust Lighting, Add Lens Flare, Add Duotone Effect, effect Add a Vignette, and so on. Uh, we're going to blur the background. So we're going to click on that, and it will automatically find the tiger in this case, and put a mask on the tiger and blur the background. And you could revert back to the original image if you need to. But I'm going to close this down and let's take a look at what it did. So you can see now the background is blurred. I'll turn this layer off. It gave us a new layer with a layer mask. And then turn it back on. You can see the background is blurred. But, you know, it isn't perfect. Uh, for example, look at the tiger's ears. There's before and there's after. So it blurred the tiger's ears. But the nice thing about this filter is it gives us a mask. So we could then use the mask and add to it. So we're going to add the ears so it's not blurring out the tiger's ears. And to do that, just make sure that you're clicked on the mask. You don't want to be clicked on the image itself or clicked on the filter below it. You want to be right on the mask that is on the tiger. Get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard with the, uh, to get the brush tool. And go up to the brush attributes at the top. And I'd say keep hardness. It depends on the image, but somewhere around 20%. Will probably work great. I'll use the bracket keys to resize the brush. The right bracket key makes it larger, the left bracket key smaller, and we're going to paint in black. So make sure black is the foreground swatch. If you don't have the default swatches of black and white, hit the D key on your keyboard. The D key gives you the default swatches of black and white. If black isn't the foreground swatch, hit the X key on your keyboard and you'll get the black as foreground, and then simply paint in this case on the tiger's ears very carefully. I'm just going to do it very quickly. So I might make a little bit of a mistake because I'm not paying attention. But we're going to bring in the ear over here and bring in the rest of the ear on this side as well. So you can do this anywhere on the image that you want to come back in. Paint in black on the mask. And then you'll be able to bring back in that area of, in this case, the tiger that we want to bring back in. Now, if there was an area we want blurred, in that case, you paint in white. So just put white as the foreground swatch and paint in white and you'll blur that out. Now, what about the blur itself? Is it adequate? Is it too much? Is it too little? Well, we could adjust that as well. What we're going to do is go over here and you can see that there's a smart filter and the blur, the blur is being applied with a filter called Gaussian Blur. To adjust that or readjust that, double click on the words Gaussian Blur and you'll get this. And then what you could do is you could just come in and move this around and it will take a second to render <laughs> and that's horrible. But you could see you could just readjust the blur to your liking. In this case, it was around 13 I believe was the default. I'll put it at 12 and click OK. So it did a pretty good job. I mean, um, what I don't like is see over here. Uh, these uh, kind of grasses that are going up in the air. See how this one's all like, kind of not blurred right there? And then this one's in focus, then blurred. So this might not have been the best image to pick for this uh, kind of demonstration. But what I'll do is I'll get a brush. I'll hit the B key on my brush, make sure I'm clicked on the mask. What I want to do is blur this. So I want to paint in white. Hit the X key 
to get the white as the foreground swatch. Then I blur the rest of that one out. Right, and then we'll come over here and see. Everything's good there. What I need to do is get this part in focus and this part in focus. So, um, or not blurred. So I'll get a really small brush, hit the X key so I'm painting in black, and then very carefully paint along the length of that. What I could do is go a certain length, go to the other end, hold the Shift key in, and then I'll paint a straight line, as you can see. Click there, Shift straight line so I could get those in and then I could kind of fine-tune it get the X key to paint in white and get a little bit of a larger brush and then kind of come in and get this edge a little bit so you can see how you could come in and kind of touch everything up the way you want it well, this I probably should have picked a different image to tell you the truth for this demonstration but I guess it's a good image to kind of demonstrate what you might need to do Oops, I screwed up. If you screw up, hit Command or Control Z as in Zebra to just undo what you did. And then you could come in and touch that up. So I think that looks starting to look a lot better. I have to do this one over here. Hit the uh, X key on my keyboard. Get a smaller brush and click there once. Go up to the top, hold the Shift key in and click there. Okay, that one looks better now. So you could see how you could come in. I need to fix these over here as well, but I'll save that for when the video is over. But I think, uh, hopefully, this gives you an idea of what you could do to blur a background behind an animal at the zoo. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>